why. <laughs> and if, speaking of ties and, and shirts, if you notice, uh, Dr. Sevilla looks especially good today because he's wearing the shirt and tie that mom gave him for Christmas. <laughs> and she already emailed him and let him know that, that, he, that he, he looks, looks good. good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the interview went well. We're going to have more, too, in the next hour from Dr. Sevilla. Oh, so in case Dr. you've Dr. missed his shirt and tie, you, yeah. you'll well, be able to see you it. you can again. catch that, and you can also <laughs> get some good advice, too, about and the does he, No, it looks like it's straight. Okay. okay. You're watching WKBN 27 First News, where your news comes first in high definition. The flu season off to its earliest and strongest start in nearly a decade. 18 states have already reached epidemic levels, and it's even proved to be deadly for some. Now, First News contributor Dr. Michael Sevilla is joining us this morning with more on this season's flu outbreak. Good morning, Dr. Sevilla. Good you, morning. You're on the front lines. You're seeing people, more people come in. Yes, and, yes. And what type of symptoms do they have? What are we seeing the most of? Well, the, the question I get you know, commonly is, you know, how do you know it's the flu? How do you know it's not something else? And, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to tell. Symptoms of the flu or fever and chills, really you know, muscle aches, runny nose. Um, how do you determine that from a common viral infection or something else? Mm -hmm. That's something you really need to uh, go to your doctor and get that checked out. Now, is, is it an age range that we're seeing more, more so too? I mean, are you seeing many children? Because I'm hearing a lot of parents are very fearful of this one because they're saying how bad and how hard it's hitting. Mm -hmm. um, if you have young children, small children, mm -hmm. how early can they be get the flu shot? How, mm -hmm. how much should you be watching them to try to control this thing? Well, everyone uh, above of, uh, age six months should be getting the flu shot, and mm -hmm. especially the younger children are more susceptible for the flu. Mm -hmm. Also, those above 65 mm -hmm. or above uh, are, are susceptible for the flu, also people who have chronic medical problems like diabetes or lung problems or heart problems, those are people that we're really targeting for the flu shot. Right. Now, what if you have an allergy to eggs? They say, some people say, I can't get it because I'm allergic to eggs. Is mm -hmm. that true? And is there any instance where you may be able to still get it? Well, if you look at the, the CDC guidelines, the people that, that make the guidelines for the flu shot, if you have a very severe reaction to the flu shot, um, you know, like having problems breathing and that type of thing, absolutely not. But if you have a mild a reaction like hives and things there are guidelines that your doctor can look at to see you know are you a good candidate for the flu shot even if you have a, an allergy to eggs okay now this particular flu they're saying it's hitting hard and it's a tough one to get through mm -hmm. A lot of people that I've talked to had this cough that lingers and lasts for mm -hmm. quite a while how mm -hmm. do you know if you're actually getting better or if the cough is staying too mm -hmm. long. What do you, I mean, can, it can go into pneumonia, correct? It can, it can. And usually people know their own bodies and say, you know, after a few days, it usually goes away. Mm -hmm. when, when we get concerned is that when that cough and that fever and that shortness of breath doesn't go away for a few days, then we get concerned not only of the flu, but complications of the flu, which include pneumonia, which people can get hospitalized for. Mm -hmm. And if you're at a high risk, people still die of pneumonia. So it's very good to get checked out if those symptoms keep going lingering on and on. If they persist, you check with your doctor. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as what can help you remedy these symptoms, I mean, they talk about the ibuprofen and so on. Are there any other miracles that people should be looking into? Does mm -hmm. the, the good old cure of the Vicks salve and that kind of, does that still work? Um, well, uh, sometimes it does. I mean, you know, obviously it's the flu shot getting that, but, but above that, getting enough rest, staying mm -hmm. well hydrated, getting enough exercise, that keeps your immune system up. As soon as your immune system just tips down a little bit, mm -hmm. that gets you increased chance for the flu and those type of illnesses right. so definitely look out for that that's to prevent it but to keep you comfortable once you've gone down <laughs> absolutely once you've gone down you can use just any yeah. of those over the counter yeah those anti-fever medicines mm -hmm. Tylenol Motrin those type of things keep well hydrated mm -hmm. and obviously as, as you've been saying before you know stay away from work stay away from school so you don't get anybody else infected right because you don't want to we're trying to reduce the spread of it absolutely all right we thank you very much for being here this morning thank you we're hopeful hopefully your numbers will go down <laughs> In the end of January and February. I don't That's know. right. Well, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Doctor. And we're going to be back with more First News right after this. You're watching 27 First News with closed captioning brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Well, if it seems like everyone around you is sick, you may not be too far off base. The flu is spreading, the numbers growing daily, and even hospitals are changing some of the rules. Salem Family Practitioner Dr. Michael Sevilla is here this morning. Thanks for being here this morning. Great to be here. Um, I do have my juice, and it's not really for a prop. <laughs> I'm trying to get through two hours of reading because it's going around, and it is going everybody around. in the newsroom's coughing. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
you don't know they tell you and we got we had a report just a few minutes ago that said if you're sick stay home but how sick is too sick to go to work it's so hard to determine well I mean the, the, the very uh, common symptoms of flu or you know fever and chills and mm -hmm. muscle aches and you know how do you really figure out is it really the flu or is it just really a common cold that's something right. that you really need to go to your doctor and get that all sorted out not really look on the internet for that type of thing mm -hmm. and they do people do try to diagnose themselves and see that's right well let's start from scratch if someone in your family comes down with the flu or if you think you're starting to get it do the Tamiflu's do all those things do they work to help stave it off it all depends on how soon it gets it's diagnosed that we do know if the these prescription medicines work if if you get to the doctor and you get diagnosed fairly quickly within the first day or two mm -hmm. so if people start to have those symptoms that's it that's the perfect time to go in get checked out sometimes there's testing involved and to see is it the flu or is it not the flu okay it how why does it seem to be spreading so fast so soon this year? Does it have something to do with the weather or they don't know? We don't know. I mean, I did, uh, an interesting statistic that, that, I, that I found was like from uh, at the Ohio Department of Health, one year ago at this time, there were about 65 people hospitalized for the flu. This year, it is 863 people in the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. So we don't know why, uh, but that's why that's, it, it's another reason for people to get their flu shots to look out for flu symptoms. Right. And if there's a question, go to your doctor and check out. Okay, well, what are you seeing in your office? I mean, because we were saying the rules are changing, even at some of the hospitals with visitors, they don't want anybody under 14 coming in. St. E's put out a list of new, new rules. A, a lot of the different hospitals have put them out in the last few days. If you're sick at all, if you even have a cough, they don't want you going to visit anyone in the hospital. There's like these stricter rules. There are these stricter rules because they're there to protect the patients or all their to protect the people working there and mm -hmm. family members there that might spread that. Is Salem Community doing the same thing? Salem That's Community right. Hospital? It's right. All the hospitals around the area do have a little bit more stricter rules. If you do have a cough or a cold, mm -hmm. don't come in and see your loved one. You know, talk to them on the phone, do other things, but do not come into the hospital if you're sick or right. ill. And I, even I, I saw one rule too that they don't want overnight stays. Like if someone's staying in the hospital and in the there may be one person who likes to like sleep in the chair or whatever with them overnight. They don't want that for the time being. Yeah, especially with this flu outbreak that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. We do know that it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. So that's why these hospitals are taking these steps to protect people to get the flu from, from getting worse. Okay, now you are going to join us in the next hour as well. I want to talk to you about children and the flu and a little bit because it seems to be a lot more dangerous for kids this year as well. So we'll talk about preventing and coping and dealing with it that way and a little more on the flu shot as well. Okay. Uh, we're going to go over to Rich now with